Let's quickly consider the second question here, uh, which is the revised version of subcontracting strategy where uh, workers' overtime should be considered before it is simply just subcontracted to the third party. So uh, there are some tricky areas to this problem. Uh, they'll be considered fairly common uh, to this type of problem. So in general, that there's no magic bullet. It's not that I'm withholding anything from you. Uh, it's just no magic bullet for this type of problem. You just have to break it down. You just have to really focus on every detail and break it down until you get the details you need to calculate the cost. Okay, so um, the condition provided here that tells us the overtime is maximum. Maximum overtime is two hours of daily. Uh, every day you have a maximum two hours of overtime. Uh, which is 25% uh, of the regular hour. Okay, originally eight hours of, is your regular time here, but you are allowed to work up to two more hours, which is increase of 25% from the eight hour. So let's take a look at how does this change our cost structure. So I assume that this will be very similar to the uh, subcontracting strategy. So what I would do is basically copy it and paste it here. All right. So I'm just going to change it. That says for um, overtime before. Just going to simply name it like this. So in terms of a strategy specific parameters, um, in addition to what we have used here. I think we should consider followings, right? Regular hours, overtime hours, um, which is eight hour, two additional hours. So for now, this is our daily, this is our daily regular capacity. Okay, 38 is our daily regular capacity. And daily additional capacity from overtime. Overtime. Because everybody can work up to 25% more from their regular time. So this is basically multiply 25%. If you want to know where this 25% is coming from, uh, look at the size of overtime. It's exactly 25% of your regular time. All right. So, uh, we so this is a new information um, and this will be different because we need to add um, overtime pay rate which is seventeen dollars per hour okay and uh, other things I don't think the yeah, other things look fine for just for now and now let's move on to the planning process. I think all those information should be updated. Uh, demand forecast wise, 900. The same. And we have in house production first from regular time. Okay, and regular time meaning 38 hours per day, multiply by the number of days like this. And boom. And let's think about quantity short. Okay, quantity short. So you have 900 as a demand, in house production this many. You always see that uh, there's some shortage occurring. So another thing you should consider is maximum. Production unit from overtime. Okay, so uh, in every day you only have up to 9.50 due to the overtime. You multiply with the number of days that will give you maximum number of production you can have from overtime. Okay, oops, I think let's finish this. And this is basically a reference cell 
reference row that tells us how many over time should be used. So in house production over time. Okay, so you compare. Oh, 64 short, but I can use up to 209. I'm just going to use 64. Okay, it did not be uh, go beyond 16 to. Uh, I hope you understand why smaller of two is considered as overtime production units. Okay, you can make up to 209, but you are only 64 short, so you only pick smaller number, which is 64. So for here, obviously, you need more. Right, so I'm going to pick 199 because I like to be conservative in terms of calculating it. Um, 209, 190. Those three cases, your demand is actually more, is it, it demand is greater than the maximum number uh, from overtime. So subcontract is going to be zero for those three cases. But here is going to be the difference between this unit, this unit. That's what I have in here. So again, we should distinguish uh, regular hour pay with overtime, overtime hour pay. Um, regular hour. K is this multiplying this number, absolute referencing it, ten dollar per hour, absolute referencing it, and for the overtime, basically is, um, yeah, this is amount of overtime multiply with this many per this many hour per unit, and multiply this. Yeah, of course, I need to do absolute referencing here, here, okay? And subcontracted cost is going to be very simple, multiplication of $20 per unit. So I think in that way, we can finish this calculation, see if this is correct, see if this is consistent with our intuition. <laughs> yep, I think, yeah, I think it's good. And I especially like this particular number, which is a far smaller, way smaller than the previous optimum. Okay, so as you can see that uh, by utilizing a little bit of overtime, we were able to push down our cost uh, to a significantly lower level. So this is a demonstration of aggregate planning with overtime and subcontract is being used, are being used. So unfortunately, with this type of problem, there is no magic bullet other than breaking down information in a piece of paper like this. Okay, so uh, we'll talk more as we meet.